How's it going everybody? I am the Texas Man. I hope you guys are all having a fabulous day. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up if you guys really enjoy it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And also make sure you guys hit that bell notification button so you guys do not miss out on a single video coming out in the future here on the Texas Man channel. With that, of course, we're going to be talking about the movie based on the very popular book, The Call of the Wild. And this is the movie course starring Harrison Ford and a CGI dog. <laughs> oh, so I want to let you guys know off the bat, in case you guys didn't read the whole title of the video, there are not going to be any spoilers in this film. So if you haven't read the book, you haven't seen the movie yet, you don't want to know anything spoiler-wise, do not worry, there's no spoilers. Uh, there's really nothing to spoil. <laughs> um, if you've seen the trailer, if you know anything about the book, if you've even read a page of the book, you're going to have a general just an idea of what happens in this movie. Um, if you have been completely oblivious to all the source material about The Call of the Wild, you haven't read the book, you have no idea what I'm talking about, I highly encourage you, first of all, read the book. I've read the book. It's an amazing read. You'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it more than the movie. <laughs> Uh, so, as always, we're going to talk about positives and negatives, and then I'll give you guys my final review score. Also, I'm going to let you guys know that uh, today uh, at 4 p.m. I am doing a special giveaway stream. So, make sure you guys, you know, you have to be subscribed in order to even be able to enter for that. And uh, I hope to see you guys there for the 4 o'clock giveaway live stream today. Uh, if you guys end up missing the live stream, though... You guys can still enter in the comments section, but you have to make sure that you're subscribed in order to even be registered and be able to get in. So uh, let's talk about positives first. Uh, the director of this film, which I thought was really interesting, worked on Crudes, and he also was the one that ended up creating the How to Train Your Dragon universe. So he wrote and created How to Train Your Dragon 1, and then it led into 2 and 3. So, with that under his belt, and this being his first time directing, though, um, I was like, okay, awesome. We're going to have some really good jokes. We're going to have amazing storytelling. And that is definitely what we got. The jokes in this film were really funny, and the storytelling was awesome. There's no dragging. There's no boring scenes, primarily. And it's just a fun adventure. Um, the second half of the film is an emotional gut-wrencher adventure. And it's going to make you cry at the end. The ending of this film made me cry. And more than likely, you will too. The set pieces and the scenery in this film are breathtaking. They are not CGI. Now, there are some things in the film... Like backdrops and whatnot, like an avalanche. I'm like, that's CGI, and it's crystal clear. You can tell. Harrison Ford. Let's talk about Harrison Ford. Is still amazing. He's super old, and they don't try to hide that fact in this film. <laughs> but Harrison Ford is still an amazing actor, and he saves the film. If Harrison Ford was not in this movie, and they had a different actor in this film, it would have been way worse on my grading scale, to be honest. Uh, they had a decent villain, and honestly, this is going to be an okay film for all ages to watch. Most people won't fall asleep. There were some people that, when I saw it, they took a nap because they're just like, okay, this isn't action-y enough, and I'm like, it's not supposed to be a shoot 'em up bang-bang type of film. It's not Marvel or DC. It's not a Mission Impossible film. It's a dog film, and it's a dog film, so get over it. <laughs> so, um... Personally, I'm not going to get this film on DVD or Blu-ray. I'm probably never going to end up watching this film again. It's a cool watch once and done type of thing. Um, it just didn't hook me as though I want to rewatch it, but it was a cool film to see. I can't say necessarily go out and see this film at the theater. Um, I would recommend seeing it, but it's not something I'm like, yeah, go spend 7 to 15 bucks. It's not worth a ticket price necessarily maybe a five dollar matinee or wait for it to come to your streaming service that you can use disney plus netflix or whatever 
it's still a good film. Um, for negatives, honestly, the book is way better. <laughs> the book is darker, and the movie went for a lighter tone. I understand why they did that, to go for a different type of demographic. And um, honestly, if it makes them you know, break even and make a profit, then good for them. But honestly, the book is much darker, and I kind of wanted to see a lot more darker tones. There's times where the film attempts to go into those dark directions and then it gets restrained and held back because oh no this movie needs to not go into rated r territory and i kind of wanted it to do that just because the book is violent and it doesn't hold back and i'm like i understand they were trying to make it more family friendly but honestly if they do a sequel or whatever i would rather have a darker tone um Next, let's talk about the CGI, <laughs> the difference between CGI and what's actually there in real life is so clear. All the dogs and all the animals in this film are CGI, and it is just crystal clear. And some moments, I think they could have used real trained dogs to do certain things. And there are movies out there where they have trained dogs and actors that work with these trained dogs and they're in dangerous situations. The CGI is used to make the dogs human-like and like have human facial emotions and all that. And I understand why they did it to, to make the dogs more human-like, but it was also kind of irritating. I just think there's other films where dogs are in dangerous situations and you can have an emotional connection and it's really good and they can be put into an avalanche and whatnot. And I'm just thinking of films like that that have come out recently. Togo! <laughs> uh, if you have Disney+, Plus, watch Togo. It is basically the Call of the Wild and they use very limited CGI dogs and whatnot. Everything else is real. And you can tell when there's a CGI dog or whatever being used. But I don't care. Because the rest of the time, it's an actual dog. And you have an emotional connection because there's actually a dog there. Like, there are some dogs in this Call of the Wild film. And I'm like, their eyes are way too brown. Their eyes are way too blue. Their paws are way too big for a dog. <laughs> I'm just like, it's clearly CGI. Um, th this bear should not be that brown. It's just, it's overdone. And there are films that have come out in the past couple of years where they're doing CGI animals like The Jungle Book and Lion King. And I'm like, they look real. This film, The Call of the Wild, does not hide the fact that they're using CGI animals at all. And it's really distracting and irritating. Um, so that's my biggest pet peeve with this film. Loads of telling rather than showing. There is so much exposition, expo, expo, exposition dumping in this film. Um, like I said, Harrison Ford saved this movie. Harrison Ford, unfortunately, I was watching my watch while I was watching the film I'm like exactly at almost an hour into the film then Harrison Ford shows up so the first hour no Harrison Ford and the first hour because of that is a drag and it's so boring and I'm just like I don't I didn't really get invested all that much with the dog because I'm just like it's a dog and he's going on this adventure he's being tortured by humans and it's an hour-long backstory explanation of making you care once you get to the end. And I'm like, I understand having background and knowledge of what happened to a certain character. But the fact that it took them an hour to do so was really boring. I'm like, you should have been able to wrap up someone's character arc in about 15 minutes. It just made no sense to me so yeah honestly go watch togo watch lion king watch jungle book 
<laughs> the Call of the Wild, it's not a bad film based on the book, but the book is so much better, and I'm not happy with the adaptation that they gave us. So, with that, guys, I'm going to give the film a 7 out of 10. You guys all have a fabulous day. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.